Howdy folks, Todd here with Great Escape Farms. Today I am doing some fall harvest on a very bountiful fall crop of a number of different things. So I am standing in front of a chi, C-H-E tree as I've called it. It's also known as a storehouse bush or a Chinese mulberry. And these fruits that are all over it, you can kind of see it's bigger, bigger around than my thumbnail. And they are, they taste kind of like a cross between a raspberry and a watermelon, actually closer to a watermelon in my opinion. And I will be harvesting some of these. If anybody has any suggestions on what to do with these, let me know. I haven't tried freezing them yet, but I have tried dehydrating them and they just don't seem to dehydrate well. I'm afraid that they're gonna get moldy. They stay too wet in the center. This bush I have details on and I will link to the ones, the videos that I do have details on in the show notes here so you can check those out. I do have details on this one. And let me scooch on over to that tree over there, which is an orange tree. And this is a flying dragon trifolate orange. And I have several oranges on here. You can see one there, one there. I have another one up there. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure on the back side there's a couple. So I have a handful of them out there. They're not quite as big as other oranges. And I'm being very, very careful with this because it has some killer thorns on this thing. And actually that's very small compared to some of them that are on here. You can see that's probably an inch, inch and a half right there, that thorn. So anyhow, I, I also have a video already posted on this one. And what I, in that video, I talk about the fruit itself, but I actually don't, about the tree and the fruit, I don't actually harvest it. So this year I'm gonna get to harvest this and make something with it. So I will probably do a separate video. I will definitely do a separate video on harvesting the fruit and showing what to do with it. And this next one is an annual. It's uh, at least in zone six where I am. It's a, I'm not even gonna say that, Tizambala, whatever, melon pear. And this is it right here. It grows huge. I actually cut 50% of this bush back just a little, well, about a month ago. And it has a bunch of fruit in there. Hopefully you can see it right in there at the end of my finger. And it is just about ripe. I'll be pulling these off and cutting them up and giving them a try. And I am working on a video for this particular plant right now. So I will have the full plant profile in late 2021 or early 2022. And this huge squash right here is a tromboncini squash. And I've seen it as a couple other names. Uh, it's uh, in the zucchini family or related to zucchini. And this is a baby right here about to flower. So um, st it's still producing fruit even in the third week of October. And this is one right here. It's just starting, and there's another one. It's just starting to uh, turn a little brown. And let me show you what I mean by brown, if I can find my way in here without hurting the plant and right there you can see these are brown and this basically you can use it as a summer squash and if you leave it on the vine it turns into a winter squash actually here's one over here that you can see much better it turns into a winter squash so I can store this for long-term use and it is just wonderful and I had quite a few summer squash in the May and June and into early July and then it stopped producing and then again in September it started producing fruit again so this thing has just been going all summer long absolutely a wonderful bush so I don't don't have a video on this yet I will see if I can get one made up this year if not I'll do one next year and while I'm standing here this one is nasturtium and you can buy the seeds in most seed stores, uh, Walmart, where, wherever you get seeds. And this is an annual. And I like the vining type right here because it has just gone crazy in this garden right here. And the flowers are edible. The flowers taste like 
black pepper. The uh, stalks of the flowers taste like horseradish and the leaves have a milder taste of black pepper. So the whole thing is edible. The flowers you can put on a salad or something just to spice up a salad and just a, a wonderful little plant there. And this is my Chinese chestnut. I have a little bit of video footage on harvesting nuts here. I have a video out about how to harvest and cook the chestnuts. And this year I am putting together a video on harvesting and growing these out into seeds. So, let me show you one here, right up in there. You can see there's a chestnut. This one's just about ready to drop. And this tree right here is a huge black walnut. And yesterday, right before I mowed the lawn, I harvested a good bit of black walnut. And I'll be doing a video on that in the coming, probably the coming weeks. I should be able to get that out and show you how to get the husks off and how to actually harvest the nuts itself. And I'm probably going to go ahead and plant some as well. But this thing has just been a huge, huge producer this year. Okay, we we're over by the garage, and while this isn't necessarily unique as far as having a raspberry bush, having one that produces fruit in May and June, stops during July, and begins again in August all the way up until frost is an awesome plant. So this is called an ever-bearing raspberry, and I have a couple here as well as one over here. And I just turned around, I didn't even plan on showing this right now, but this is ginger. I'll be harvesting this in the next week or so, and hopefully I can get a regular plot of ginger going. So the raspberries, the ginger, I have all kinds of mint in here that I can still harvest, and I need to start drying some leaves on that, so just so I have some for winter use. And then right here, I have Jerusalem artichokes. So these two round containers that's rectangular one and that rectangular one and this is a root crop that i can use for the for a kind of like a starch only it's high in inulin so it doesn't give you the sugar spike like a lot of other type of starches and then this one is called mint root or i forget what it's called chinese mint root something like that it is also a root crop and I will be doing a video on that one. I've already done a video on the Chinese Arctic choke. Ginger, I haven't done one. Raspberries, I can't remember if I have or not. So uh, let's see, I thought I had one other thing. Oh, this is the Jerusalem Arctic choke. It's uh, probably about 10 foot tall right now. So this is something that got away from me in the garden bed. So I let it grow out this year. I'm gonna go ahead and dig it up as much of it as I can. Once it gets started, it's tough to stop here. And while I'm here, let me run around. And one other thing that I'm going to be harvesting here in just another week or two are the sweet potatoes. And these things have just gone crazy this year. So uh, I will do a separate video on harvesting the sweet potatoes, but we should get a huge, huge crop out of this. So in a, earlier in the video, I believe it was this video anyhow, I called this a Shapova and it is not. This is my Shapova bush right here, alive but not happy. This is actually a quince or kince. So, whoops, just came off. So I guess I'll be doing this sooner rather than later. So I'm going to run this inside, try to get some seeds out of it. I'll give it a try. It's known for being extremely hard with a flavor profile similar to apple and pear. So I'll definitely get this one off. I got some spots on some others. Got some blight going on here and more down there. So we'll give this a try and uh, see what we come up with. Maybe grow some seeds out and see if we can get them to go grow. And another one that I will be putting a video together on, it's not quite ready yet. I need a, a frost, which we should have had by now, but this is a medlar. And I do have a video or two out on this one and I'll probably I don't believe the video that I have shows actually har eating the harvest so I might show you one on that as well and another thing not so much uh, unique edible but I'm still harvesting apples and pears from the orchard so even late in October I have a lot of apples and pears and another annual is garden berry pepino melon which is right here and 
I am putting together a video on this. I was waiting for one to turn orange, which this one has. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest that, cut it open, and show what it looks like next to the poison ivy here. So uh, hopefully I'll get a couple more out of here. There's the orange one. I'm not sure if it was on camera just a minute ago. So I do have a couple of fruits there, so can't wait to try okay, that. And this one is called a Garden Berry Naranjilia. I guess that's how you say it. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to harvest this one because it was a got a little bit of a late start. Oops, got to be careful. Pull it back here and you can see in there, there's several fruit there and there's some more back in there. I need to, that to turn orange before I harvest it. And right now it's green, although it is large. I might get some out of there, but this one, look at the, look at the thorns on this, even on the leaves. This one, everybody is uh, very interested just because of the thorns on the leaves and the stalk. Not so much interested in having it, but interested what the heck is that thing with all those thorns on. So I am in the process of putting together a video on this. Hopefully I get the fruit so I can actually show the edible fruit off of it. But in either case, I will show that one just because it's unique with the thorns and all. One other thing, not horribly unique, but I do need to dry it for some tea. Is right here, I have some lemon balm. So it's in the mint family and all kinds of other things going on. Tomatoes and peppers and all, not so unique with those. But plenty of things to go in our fall salads here. And I see green beans over there. So it's just been a, a wonderful, wonderful fall harvest here. So that's it for this video. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much and have a great day.